placements like that. Yeah, can you see it developing now? Before I do any more spray roses, I'm going to maybe introduce you've got things like the wax flower. These spray roses are lovely because they've got nice stems. Mm. When I was looking at them, I couldn't see whether the stems were long or not. So remember, transition us to the outside edge. So now you're working all the way around. You're creating a good colour balance. So if you're having cerise pink here, you must have pink in the middle. If you've got white here, white in the middle. Follow that pattern as well. So look for some of the small spray roses. These are nice spray roses. Can you please about them? Good. Keep turning it as well. What a lot of people tend to do is they work on one side and forget about the other side. It's very important that you turn it so that you're rotating and you're getting a view of your design from all different angles. Again, remember, bringing the colour towards the centre, being slightly smaller, and we're going to raise some in a little bit. Really highlight that focal flower, so that focal flower looks like it's got some sort of um, starting point there, so that your eye goes there first. I'm going to bring that towards, again, three. Why do you think I use three roses and not five or uh, four roses? Because four, four make um, a square. Yeah. Yeah, so it makes your eye look like it's in a square and this is a round. So threes and fives work well. So I tend to buy in threes and fives. The only time when I do buy four is when I need one as a focal, then the three. So it's an odd number to buy, but that's when you need them. That's a bit big, that rose. I'm just going to change it to a slightly less open one. And use all of your stem. Don't just, um, you know, look at all the different sizes. Create some recession, yeah, so create a bit of depth. Your design is interesting when it's got some depth to it as well. So the stems are all at different heights. Always cut your stems at nice clean angles as well. Okay, keep turning. We can go back and add foliage and things in later if we want to. So hyacinths, as I say, you could put hyacinths in if you wire them up. Always look at it from a bird's eye view so you can get an idea of your colour balance. So I'm actually going to place that one there. I'm not going to put any more spray carnations in. So that's where we're going at the moment. Yeah. Don't worry if it drips because that's okay. It's natural to happen. Because what you're doing is you're pressing all that water from that stem mm. in that foam together and it's going to obviously mm. drip a little bit. Of then we're going to do it filling in now, more filler. So filler flowers are really good. Wax flowers are brilliant because it's got a nice shape to it. So we're going to just do some nice, there's no real set place for this, but just following that pattern that you've done. So you can do your outside edge first. The foliage of the wax flower is also lovely. It smells good as well. Yeah, it's got that sort of lemon scent mm. to wax flower. Even bits like this are really pretty that you could incorporate. Another different texture into your design. Has anyone had the opportunity to make sort of some things like this before in the bridal bouquet holders for yes. weddings? Yeah? Last year. You did last year. Anyone had the opportunity to do any wedding flowers for anybody? Not yet. Maybe that's our next step. So you'll be able to, do, you know, if you do get approached by somebody to do some wedding flowers, at least you know you've got the confidence to be able to, you know, to do it. I've done some flowers for First Communion. Like yeah, one. First Communion. This would be ideal for really ideal. Would you say that this is classed as a formal design or an informal design? It's formal. Why is it formal? It is formal, right? Yeah. Why do you think formal? Anyone, anyone got any you ideas? You have to uh, keep the rules for make the shape yeah, I mean, hand tides have the, the rules as well. It's classed as formal because it's, it's very structured in the foam and it's in a handle. So if someone's having a very traditional wedding, like a church wedding um, or any type of wedding, where it, th these are quite good in the holders. Hand tides, you know, like poses, they're big class as informal. So they're using natural stems. So this is a, quite a formal design, categorised as a formal Okay, so you can see I'm constantly turning it, I'm checking my sides, giving a bit of colour and interest at the bottom. 
I just want to bring a little bit of depth to it. So I'm actually going to bring a little bit of white just to help with those white spray carnations so they don't look so lonely. And this is a Santini chrysanth. Again, it's beautiful to be breaking down. Bring some on the outside edges. Okay, around that focal flower. So this is what we call our recession. Yeah? Recess your material low down. It's a very generous time, this assessment, so you've got to think about how can I now create it distinctively. This is a good basic design. It's now thinking, what can I do to give it my little twist? Okay, so I'm going to give you some ideas and then you can go away after and explore them and, um, and develop your own sort of ideas as well to your taste. Let me just finish this off. So can you see when it looked really strange initially with the roses and how it's now developing? And if you were doing it for a wedding, it's important to find out the age of the bride because, or the bridesmaids because, it's, because then the size would reflect that. Because if there was somebody that was more um, taller or, or more older, maybe sort of teenage years, you might want to make a bigger size. Maybe a child that's much younger, this size is suitable, and even actually smaller. They sometimes do one for like little, little tots, you know, four-year-olds. So you would go the next size down. So when they look at their photos, they're all sort of uniformed with their different sizes. But do you think a bride could actually carry something of this size as well? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's not going to have to have a large design. Yeah. So you've got Okay, so I'm going to stop with my flowers. I'm then going to look and see if I can see any gaps. Okay, so in assessment, it's very important. Hold to eye level. If you see some gaps, you need to go in and actually fill the gaps, okay? With some little bits of foliage that you might have. Any sort of little sections. Okay, this is important as well, so you might want to create a little bit of something underneath. Now I've got to think, okay, it's a lovely basic design. How can I make it distinctive? So, many things you could do. You could use uh, skeleton leaves. Okay. I, what I do is I roll these and fold them. And then I use my wire. Say um, a 46 wire is suitable for this. It's quite light material. And I do what's called a double leg now. Hold onto my thumb. Bend. Wrap round, which I'm sure you've done wiring before, then you straighten it. It's called a double leg mount because two legs. Two legs. <laughs> these are lovely because it's a nice point. Maybe you might think, oh I could put these on my outside edge. Okay, you've got to know it, you've got your anchor now into your foam. So you've got to find a little piece of oasis though. Yeah, and you can incorporate some of those around which gives you a quite a different texture, doesn't it? So it softens it a little bit. So again just pinch under the thumb, bend down, and wrap round, double leg round, and straighten, and then cut them so they're not too long, and then you might want to find, maybe do three of those, possibly, in there, just do one more, you, to, you don't want two big ones, you see, you need to find sort of nice suitable ones, so that's something that you could do. Feathers, if you wanted to incorporate feathers, why technique is exactly the same, no different. So you could do that as well. And that could be incorporated in there. You could. Pins, if you wanted to. You could obviously dress your roses. I don't know if you've done that before. You've got the diamante pins as well. You can actually put a pearl in the centre of your flower. Into the focal flowers. You could also dress the flower design if it's, if it's you know, to make them. But you've got to be visible. There's no point just losing them in there. So you could do that sort of thing. If you were going to do ribbon, how do you think we can use ribbon? Bows maybe? Sort of little, this is lovely because it's ribbon edged. So you could do some little bows, little loops. That ribbon trailing off. Yeah, you could do ribbon trailing off. Mm -hmm. Again, little bunch like that. Same technique, double leg mount. I'm not saying do everything in one design. You've got to decide. <laughs> Otherwise it'll look a bit busy. <laughs> okay, little bit like that. You could incorporate 
and you could put bows in there if you wanted to, especially if they've got that colour in their dress and you're struggling to find a flower that that colour is. You can always get fabric swatches from the uh, dressmakers. Uh, as I say, feathers, you could do the same. The other option that we, you've got is these lovely wires. You can keep them as they are, um, and you could do some sort of cage work or framework in there, or little springs coming out. Or what we were just doing just now is um, incorporating the wall. Very, very simple technique. So this one's showing the wire underneath, which is quite nice. This one's actually covered the wire. And just what we do, just get one of your wires, tube glue, okay? Tiny little bit of glue on the end of your wire. Just a little bit, don't need loads, just so it's there. Choose your colour wall, so I went for this, my favourite colour. Bit messy to start with. Hold your wall, let me move this out of the way. Hold your wall where your glue is. And then just start working down the stem. If you want it to go very dense and close, like that one, so you don't see it, all you do once you get to a certain point is just very carefully just push your bits up. Or you can do it as you go along and do it quite tight. If you want to do it loose, you just literally just let the gaps show. And you just roll around and feed. And what's nice is with the different colour wall, you're actually seeing all the different colours as well. One of the, in, in that book there, they actually do this, but they actually put um, a wire in a drill. You know, mm. like a normal household drill, yes? And they turn the drill on, and this is spinning, and you hold the wall, and it gets bigger and bigger. Christina maybe can do a demonstration of that for us at one stage, because she's an expert with the drill. She did that. Is it quite fun, Christina, isn't it? Yeah. And, and, you it, get it off. and you can control the wall, and you can make thicker sections and thinner sections. And you just literally keep going down until you've got enough to what you need. Look how quick that technique is. It doesn't take long at all. Just that sort of movement in your finger and this one guiding it. I'm keeping my fingers quite close though. I'm not sort of, so it gives you a nice, otherwise you tend to go to the same spot. And when you've done enough and you're happy, you think I've finished that now, just put a blob of glue, whoops, just to stop it from coming off, cut your wall away. And then go down to that section there. Oops. Mm. So it dries very quickly actually as well, which is good. Mm. And then you've got it. You could it tease it like this. Mm. So you've got uh, some sort of framework or cage work, which is quite pretty. So it becomes part of the design. You could um, find something to go round, probably a bit too small, a pen of some sort, so you could go around a pen and do some little springy bits. giving you some sort of ideas of things that you could actually work on and incorporate. Mm -hmm. It looks sort of interesting how you can actually have different textures and, and, and techniques. It's all about the techniques. What I want to do is introduce you to techniques so that, you know, hopefully if most of you do progress onto level three, techniques is something that we cover always. They have to show their understanding of techniques. So it's um, working with material, not being afraid to explore unusual material and that's why that book gives you that sort of um, guidance really to sort of start you off in there. So for assessment, key things to remember is think of it as a child. What else is important to remember for assessment? What have you sort of, what things to think about when you're making this? Timing. Timing, obviously very important, yeah. What about the design? What's key things we think about the design? The profile. Profile, remember? Dotted line. Yeah, do that with your hand. Turn it eye level. Look at the, you know, look for gaps. Yeah? Focal flower. One of the other words. Remember those terms that we use about what's the one with the small buds to the outside edge? Transition. Transition. 
transition. What about the one where I bury things low down? Recession. Recession. Colour balance. So if we think about principles and elements of design, dominance. Where's dominance in this design? Uh, focal. Focal. Yeah. Proportion. Maybe someone on this side of the room. Proportion. Where's the proportion in this design? Uh, pink roses. Pink roses. So size of flower in relation to the size of the design. Size of design in relation to being for a child. Yeah. Um, harmony. Where's harmony? Karina, give her harmonies. The colour nice. Colours. So it's ha remember harmony is like size. if it's pleasing to the eye. They're all happy. There's not anyone sort of fighting for attention. Rhythm. Where's my rhythm? Where they place the flowers? It is. Where else is rhythm? You place the flowers to create a. Yeah. So this is rhythm, movement. So it's sort of flowing through. Also, the pattern, the repetitive pattern, creates rhythm as well. Yeah. Scale is obviously size of design. So you've got every flower design we make, whether it's a buttonhole, a corsage, this, a big arrangement. The principles and elements of design are there and visible. Also for assessment, you would expect to spray it with water, so with a spray bottle, yeah, and present it on the sand. It doesn't expect you to cover the handle. Unless you've got loads of time, you think, oh, what can I do? Then you can do it. But don't try and do something at the end just because you have to do. Yeah? You don't, it's not expected. What I'd like to want to see no, is really... Assessment, yeah, so you need to put, like, the um, If you're looking for the marks, distinctive oh. use of material. If you just did flowers, that's a lovely basic standard design and it's commercial, but it's not showing your level of skill. Okay. So I would like to, and it's a very generous time, it's like 50 minutes this assessment, 45 to 50 minutes, it's very generous. And I feel that with practice you'll do this bit quite quickly, it'll give you a good bit of time to start using some experimental techniques in there. Yeah. Alright, so I'll leave it here as a demonstration. Um, we have passed our